Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Travis and we've been doing videos on this 48 Chevy pickup truck. And today, this is a continuation of putting it back together and getting it back on the road. Just to bring you up to speed real quick, in the last video, we put the radiator in, the radiator core support in, the grill in, the front balance panel on, the bumper on, the headlights in, rewired the entire truck, all new wiring. I still got to make it look a little better, you know, put some tape around it and, you know, just pick it up a little bit but all the wiring is done in it. Uh, headlights, tail lights, turn signals, brake lights, the whole nine. And we also got the gas tank situated. I got extremely lucky, count my lucky stars. I didn't even have to take the gas tank out. It was clean, it was empty, it was ready to go, unbelievably. So again, you can see a new wire here. We got the uh, sending unit working, sending unit worked put a new hose on the gas tank so it, it pulls from the gas tank now it runs on its own fuel and all that good business and that is sort of where we ended off so this truck is coming right along i mean we're in pretty good shape on it now it's to a point where it can run and drive you know i can get in it and move it around the yard and stuff and all the lights work which it's it's pretty good it, we're, we're really getting there on this thing i figured if we went this far we might as well put an interior in it which isn't too expensive by interior, I mean the seat. The seat is the only real interior upholstered piece in the truck, which is almost done. I have it being done right now. It's gonna cost about 500 bucks to do the seat. But other than that, it's all cardboard. There's no other real upholstery in the truck. Um, I can do this whole interior for less than $1,000. You wanna talk about an interior, behind that Model A, my 56 Cadillac, that was a nightmare. That was a nightmare. Everything was upholstered. The seats were upholstered, the carpet, the door panels. I will never do that again. This is cake. We could do this for less than a thousand bucks. This is gonna be about 850 to $900 to do this whole interior, which is fine. We got the door panels with the little trim rings around them. We got the glove box. It's gonna go in there. And we have the floor or the, not the carpet, but the, it's rubber. And that's what we're gonna be putting here. And you can see it was not carpet from the factory. There's still pieces of it hanging around, like right here. This is what it was. You can see it's really hard. See that? So that's what that is, and that'll go back in there. And you know what? That's good, because if you're going to be driving this truck around and you don't want to be scared to get in it and use it, rubber's the way to go. Carpet's just going to get really nasty and dirty. On top of doing the interior, I would like to get the hood put on so I don't have to keep putting tarps over the engine um, because you know we get rain sometimes and I just want it protected you know my little investment under there and I think we'll throw this in there this is an original Chevrolet heater for this truck because what they have in there is not the original heater and I was just at a swap meet and happened to find that and that's the fresh air heater that's the upgraded heater those are expensive little options I bought that for 60 bucks it's got the heater core in it and everything and so that won't be hard to put in but the first thing I want to deal with is the charging issue it was charging the other day and then it quit charging you know that's that's just how old vehicles are it quit charging don't know why everything's getting power my bet is that something's going on in the generator the brushes something's going on there so let's pull it underneath the carport and um, get to work on it and armature wires off. All right, 
right, so I'm trying to basically bench test this generator. So we're going to hook negative to the case. We're going to connect our field and armature terminal together. And then we have to have a power source. And if I touch this, see we're not. Oh. See how it quit? All right, see how it's spinning? Yeah, if you have something mechanical driving it, it will put current out. But if you put current into it, then this should turn into the motor. You're doing, you're basically using it backwards. In the motor, it's being driven, putting out current. But if you put current to a generator, it should turn into a motor. And that's what we just tested. So, I don't know, maybe we're not getting a good ground or something, or... I bet that's what it is. I bet we're not getting a good ground. Let me, um, like, sand these off or wire wheel these off and put it back on, because it was charging. I know this thing works. Let's see if it'll start up. Maybe the battery is still dead. Power neutral. Well, we're still not getting anywhere. I took the regulator cap off. I tried cleaning the contacts right here. This thing is its not wanting to do its thing. It ain't wanting to charge. So we'll just switch the regulator out because, I mean, the generator is working. I've been having to mess with this, I don't know, three quarters of the day now. Dad has like a box of 12 volt gener uh, regulators. I put that one on, I had that one on, I had that one on, none of them would work. I put this one on from my uh, 56 Caddy. I used it as sort of a donor child because I know that car charges for a fact. And look, now we're charging, so. I don't know. These these regulators look perfect, but they don't work. None of them work. That one worked perfectly. Finally on the fourth one. It's charging. Man alive. I can't believe it. Usually them regulators are pretty dang tough, but anyway, we can move on now. Alright, so now that our charging mess is over. That was a complete debacle that ate up most of my day unexpectedly. Uh, now we can get to the fun stuff, which is interior. Take these screws out. Looks like we have them all, so I'll just reuse them. And off camera, it's pretty boring. I, nobody needs to see it. <laughs> I lubricated all this stuff. These doors didn't shut right. They shut real rough. None of this stuff wanted to work. So I got in there, spent a few hours um, making sure these roll up and down like butter. And you can almost do it with one finger. So 
The windows roll up and down real nice. Doors open and shut good now. Had some problems with the latches. These doors actually lock, so this is your open, and then that's your lock. So if you push it all the way that way, it locks. So this is all working lickety split now. Set it on. Oh yeah. And then the way I like to set these, where is it when it's all the way up? There you go. Sort of faces the same way. Looks good. I like it. Look at that, it covers up all that nastiness. to go now that we got our door panels looking funky fresh we got a glove box situation so I got my glove box in the mail I think this is how it goes right yeah the cool thing is they sent the clips but no screws but some smart cookie put every single screw back in the hole isn't that awesome how often do you how often does that happen those screws should be long gone so I don't have to go buy screws, I can just use these, which I'm very happy about. Um, but this glove box, this is screwed up. It's supposed to lock. One, it's caved in, all right? And two, there's a string holding it, whatever this is, baling wire. So I think my dad gave me this. This one's in much better shape. It's chrome, kind of bubbles out, that's how they're supposed to be. It's got the little clip right here to clip into this and I've had this soaking in WD-40 to kind of, you know, bring it back a little bit. So, to take that heater out just to get this glove box in that's not gonna fit you'll tear that glove box all up Nice and easy now. Glove box is in. These are harder to get in than you might think. They never want to fit around these corners here and sometimes you got to really stretch them and yeah, it's just tough, but doors work. 
button works, all that. All right, that's looking a lot better. As far as electrical work goes, is put the light bulbs in the sockets that I made up. Now, these are the original sockets, but I heat shrink some new, like, tubing on there over the original wire. And um, I ordered some 12 volt lights because some of the lights in here, they're still 6 volt. And we should have dash lights. Really, if I turn on and then I ground this out, I should have. Let's see here. Yeah. See? There you go. There's your there's your light. They get grounded when you put them in the housing, and then they work. The original wire, I just left it in there. Oh, see, here it is. But anyway, this old cloth wrapped wire, I mean, it was up in the headliner, nothing. It just, it's in good shape, but down under the dash, it was cut. So I, <clears throat> I put a new wire on it and ran it to the headlight switch. So, I mean, if this switch is good, hopefully we... I lubricated the switch with PB Blaster and you can see the test light coming on and off. So it's getting power and the switch is working now. It wasn't before. But when I bolted the housing back in, the light still wasn't coming on. So I put the test light in the switch and you can see the test light going on and off because I have the test light hooked to a good ground. So the housing must not be grounded right. And I have the light on. See? So if I put the bolts in, should be good to go. Check it out. You know, it's little details like that, in my opinion, that make a truck. You know, anybody can make a truck, car, go down the road, but where you lose people is the little details that make it work. The dome light, because people say, oh, no one's ever going to notice that. You know, that the, no one's ever going to turn that on and off. I will, and I know it works. That's what I like. I also put the dash lights up in there. If you check it out, you can see off to the side. See it on that one too. So all the dash lights are working and I even plugged this guy in right here. High beam indicator. Very happy with that. I think what we'll do now is we'll try and put the headliner in it's two halves, one front, one back. There's a divider piece in the middle, and there's also a holder piece right here, which I don't have, which I'm going to get this afternoon. I'm going to go pick it up from a guy. Uh, but I think this is cool. Check this out. This right here is the last remaining piece of the original cardboard headliner. I want to show you before I took it out. It's even, looks like it was blue, like that Air Force blue. So it's kind of cool that... That's the only evidence left. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. Looks like it was blue. Very neat. Very neat.
headliner is officially in. These really are tougher to get in than what you think. That cardboard looks like it'll fit, but it doesn't. You gotta work it, and it's so delicate, but I got it up inside the window trim. Have the window trim tightened down. That middle bow in there, I got the back bar in. I had to go get that today from a friend of mine I know who sells parts for these trucks in town. Looks good. I mean, it looks really good. It looks better than that rusty roof up in there. So we're coming together. We got brown headliner, we got brown door panel. We're gonna have a brown seat here soon, tobacco brown. I also put the radio delete plate back in it, covered up that hole. Uh, now what we gotta do is the heater. So I took that one out. Check this out. I found this at a swap meet for 60 bucks. It's out here in the dirt, so I'm about to test it. Um, this is an original heater for these trucks. Check it out. Look at that Chevrolet right on it. And the only issue is it has a six volt motor, but I think I have a voltage reducer uh, for this. I guess while we have it all out, here's the heater core. I want to put water in it and then put some pressure to it, see if it's leaking. It looks like it has a repair or so here, which isn't bad if it, if it holds. So put some air through it, see if it's plugged up or not. And then we'll put water in it. First off, let's try and get these a little more round. It's better. All right, so it's not blocked up. So under normal operating conditions, this would be under a little bit of pressure from the cooling system, you know, uh, maybe six pounds or something. So we'll put a pressure regulator and we'll set it to like 10 pounds. Yep, I think maybe I see just dripping water, but we'll put it in and we'll try it. Let's see, got that hooked up. Positive, negative. Got the voltage reducer right here. I don't know if this is supposed to work for like a motor like this. Give it a shot though. Sometimes these motors need a little bit of help. I heard it. There it goes. Something's smoking. There you go. It works. That other heater was obviously something that somebody put in there, but I also know that that's not factory because this plate I'm taking off right here is a factory plate 
it's a heater delete plate because when the heater is put in, the real one, the blower motor, that six volt blower motor that hangs off, actually goes through this hole a little bit. It protrudes out into the engine bay. And there's also a big plate inside that I saw that's never been off. And it is where a fresh air heater would go, which is what this is. There it is. That Air Force Blue again. Yeah, this hasn't been off since the factory. I'm the first guy to put a clutch head in this screw since General Motors in 1948. Pretty cool. This is the door right here I'm talking about. So this plate right here comes off and that heater uh, and then that heater will bolt right here and there's also two holes in the firewall right here and the fresh air part of the heaters there was two kinds of heaters there was a recirculating heater they had and a deluxe heater or a fresh air heater the recirculating heater went up in here like that other one did and all it did was recirculate air inside the cab but the fresh air heater utilized this door here and that's why there's fins on the outside of this cab most people don't know what those fins are for they think it was for decoration but actually it was functional uh, if it did have a fresh air heater it would utilize ambient air outside air and those fins were what fed the fresh air part of the heater so when i get this oh come on when i get this door off i'll show you those fins that you've probably seen before on others what it was for. It's crazy to think that you're the first person to touch something from the factory that long ago. This plate was put on in Detroit, Michigan in 1948. There it is. And then uh, you can probably see the fins from there, the daylight. camera died yesterday as I was installing this but I did get it put in I got all the clutch heads put in it there's two bolts you can see that arm right there that bracket uh, there's two studs that go through the firewall I got those nut and bolted in so it's sitting there and that wire hanging down it's ready to hook up to power you can put hoses to it right there through the firewall the holes original holes are there so it's all in ready to go I love it the look of these original heaters just is perfect I like it I got my door panel handles in the mail so we'll put those on they're gonna go like right here so let's get those suckers on so with the door panel they sent this template here with two holes in it to show you where the holes are because once you get the panel on you don't know where the holes are for the handle so like that <sighs> There it is. Perfect. Can't believe it. First try. Unbelievable. a little off. There we go. That one I got right on the money.
Much better. I like that. Coming together really nice. Now I want to address fixing the speedometer. Uh, so this one is pretty beat up. Numbers are pretty faded. The needle is broken off. And I have this one that a friend of mine gave me. And this one's in much better shape looks wise. Has a needle on it. Face looks pretty good. And, but it's stuck at 30. And also this turns pretty hard. So the grease might be hard in there or somebody messed it up and it's loose. I see those screws are loose. So we'll take it off, see if we can lube it up. Yeah, somebody's tried to rebuild this thing. Oh. Yep, someone's tore the spring all up in there. I did the same thing to that 60 Impala. Yeah, that's, that's not fixable. See that spring right there, right behind the three? See how it's all cattywampus? It's not perfect right there. See how it's all wound around itself and everything. I accidentally did the same exact thing to my 60 Impala. Once that spring loses its correct factory settings, it's, it's toast. There's nothing you can do. Here's the one out of the truck. Just went ahead and took it out because if anything, we can use the needle off of this one. That needle, see? just disintegrated, turned to dust right in front of me. Right in front of our very eyes. So oh, there's the rest of it. Down in there. Well, it's just a big ball of nothing in there. All right, well, we're gonna have to just stick it in, stick, we'll stick the better one in there for decoration, I guess. Man, that sucks. That sucks. Something else I just did was I made the uh, choke work. If this ever goes somewhere where it's cold, you'll need that. Just doing its thing. Something I would like to get done today is getting the hood on, but I want to adjust these valves again before I put the hood on. Um, because if you remember or notice when it runs, it's pretty clacky. We adjusted them before we ran it, but now that we have ran it, we'll do it again. And plus, like I've said before, I just want to be as done as possible underneath here when I put the hood on. Because they hang kind of low. You know, they just, they just hang low. And also, uh, sometimes with these engines, there's problems with them not delivering oil to the top. Even though I am reading good oil pressure, I want to make sure that we're getting oil to the top of this motor. Yeah, it's dragging. Look at that. That's the clattering one. Look at that. That one's very loose too. Quiet. 
there's holes right here where the oil comes out. It's running real good. Stop all that. See, these are the bolts that hold the hoods on on these trucks and they're shouldered right here. You can't even get these specialized bolts at Ace Hardware or a regular hardware store. you got to order them. So that's one of the reasons why I've been waiting to put the hood on. So I'm going to squirt. There's see. Let's go. Over. There's C3. There's one. I'm going to spray these with WD-40. Two, three. And we'll go ahead and tap them. So the first one, all right, threads in like butter. Like that. There we go. I'm glad this thing ain't painted because there's no way this would be happening. Try and get the last one over here. Whoa, we are way off. Dang, why are we that off? Heck, this one went in easy. Look at that. First time it's been on there in probably 50 years. Probably shuts like garbage.
Oh. This hood, hood's bent over here. See how you can see a bunch of daylight coming through on that side? But over here you can't. Uh, that little end of the hood is bent. So it's folded in. Something happened to it real bad. It must have got knocked real hard. It broke, broke this and, you know, bent this in. So we'll see if we can bend that out. There we go, it wouldn't shut before. So right now this thing's fitting real terrible. You can see that giant gap right there. I had to really push it down to get it to fit here, but it still doesn't fit, look at that. But also on my GMC, there's a gap there too. Pretty bad. I never was able to quite get that out. Um, but this is also bent in. We'll have to bend that out. Uh, yeah, it just fits really rough. So have to do some finessing. This was already like this. But yeah, we'll have to adjust. There's a hood adjustment here. Might have to adjust it some. But we'll get it. It's just going to take a little bit of work. It's obviously supposed to follow the contour of the fender. It won't even go all the way down because this one's it's pushed back. This the point got hit back. So. better. could still probably pull it out a little more right here it was really hit in we need to yank it out or bend it or something and uh, we'll have it yeah but it actually you know, at least it shuts all the way now down to the grill it'll it would latch so this whole area right here is where it's the worst it's it's it should be solid and it friggin tore it right here might have to weld that up and straighten it a little bit now the next part I'm about to show you is gonna be a nightmare so it all started when I saw this was broke. There's a handle right here that's broke. I think I told you about that a minute ago. I bought this other original piece. You can see how it's got the little the handle right here. But let me, let me get my light here. To take this out, it's held in with these clutch heads that are already halfway rounded off. See that? I can get in there with a clutch head, but I'm going to have to heat these up because once you round them off, there's really no good way to get them out. And also, if you notice, somebody's welded this to the actual hood there. And they welded it right there. See that? They welded it there. And they did have it welded here on the other side, but the weld broke, fortunately. I mean, honestly, it would be nice to just get a whole other hood with that latch on there, but, you know, that stuff just... It's not laying in people's yards. You can't just go get it from Walmart. So 
you're gonna have to fix it. And then, <laughs> oh man, you have the latch mechanism here. That would bolt on if this wasn't completely trashed. Um, so we're gonna have to straighten this out, see what we can do there to get it to latch, if we even can. So we got, we got a whole mess going on with the front latch of this hood. in the whole thing. Um, maybe if I put a vice grip on it. This one's got a little bit thinner jaws. Now once we get this off, this is something that we're going to have to lubricate and make sure these thread real nice because we might have to do some adjusting on the hood you know so Tap it, make sure it's nice and smooth. Moves like butter though. That's what we want to see, just finger tight really. Tell I'm gonna need to tap these too. I should have known better. Took it back off, tapped it as I should have in the first place, and now easy. Easy peasy.
I don't want to hear it on my welding job. All it needs to do is hold. We're not welding the oil field pipelines over here. Lithium grease, pivot point, all that. Might need to adjust that big screw out a little bit. Okay. Well, that was it. Look at that. It works. Sweet. I can get this one, you guys get that one. Oh yeah. Isn't that nice? That's Isn't awesome. Pretty? Look at the round, the round, with the frame. Close. Yeah, that's, that's right on the money. I rebuilt the springs. Do you want to set it down here or do you yeah, want to? Wherever you want. All right, let's just set it down right here. Actually, let's set it on the concrete. That's going to be awesome in there. I like it. Yeah, this is the last piece of the puzzle. I love it. Man, take a look at that seat. Eddie did a great job, man. I got no complaints about that. It looks beautiful. He even color matched the seat frame to the seat. All these lines match up. Seat's a little shifted. But all these lines match up. He even had the bigger one down here in the middle. He's got the stitching up there. He even had stitching around the uh, brackets that bolt it to the frame. I love it. Man, it looks good. This is gonna look so good in there. I'm so excited about this. So I vacuumed it out one last time. Now, before we put the seat in, I want to put this rubber mat in. Uh, the seat will be our last thing. So, let me figure out how this goes. Pretty sure it goes like... This is going to hide a lot of sin. They got indentions on the other side of this mat to show you if you're doing factory where the holes are for like your icy, like the slit here for your e-brake, your hole for your starter, your holes for your pedal all right so I, I get how they're doing this okay we might have to well I got my razor blade but on top of that we probably are gonna have to take a few things apart to actually get it to go over you know what I mean because we can't put it over the pedal we might have to take the pedal off this take the e-brake um, pedal portion off where you put your foot so it'll slip over the bar
Now we can do away with my seat. <sighs> These are just light enough to, to be able to do by yourself. I know what I'm missing. That's why it won't fit. I don't have the runners in there. The uh, To do your seat back and forth, your adjuster, that's what I'm missing. Stupid me. These things, they adjust the seat. They bolt to the frame and I forgot to put them in. Sometimes you forget stuff. So now that the seat adjusting mechanisms are bolted to the frame and then bolted to the body of the truck, now we can put our cushions in. So this one has three prongs that go in the bottom. So there it is. There it is. Just had to give it a little squeeze. bottom half is a lot more crude all it does is push in sometimes they can take quite a bit of force though oh. all, right. all right there it is wasn't as hard as I thought all right, I think the interior is complete, guys. Hooey! Looks good. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, sits nice and firm, tall. The way you look out the windshield is perfect. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like this truck a lot.
out here in the sun where you can really get a good look at it. This truck has such a killer look. That brown seat in there looks great. It flows with the rest of the truck. Black rubber mat in there looks good. It fits correctly. I got the holes cut all around the e-brake, the clutch, the brake, the dimmer switch. It goes around the steering column, gas, starter, everything. It even fits in the original dowel pins right here. You can see here, they got these holding pins. It fits in those. Just a great looking interior for what this truck is. Brown headliner. It's, uh, it's came together really nicely. It's just right to drive it, enjoy it, have fun with it. It's just a cool truck. One of the last touches is the visor, right? Gotta have the visor on there. The visor gives it an absolutely killer look. I love visors. Some people like them, some people don't. But man, that looks good. With the white walls. Oh my gosh, these advanced design trucks, man. They just got the look, they got the best look. These are so cool. I know dad's been in the videos a little less, so let's pop over and see what he's doing real quick. Enough, man. Yeah, there's no other way to hold that thing on. You gotta put them. You gotta put them screws in there. I hate. I would hate doing it to something that's painted, but to this truck, it's okay. Yeah. You smells new. It does smell new. Yeah, it smells new. Running all right. Yeah, it runs good. Temperature and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Charging. No. No. It quit charging. Again. Thanks. So the reason that dad hasn't been in the videos as much as of late is because of this thing. So he bought this 1980 or 81? 80. 80. 80 Volkswagen Rabbit. That's what they call it. Is the cars the rabbits or the trucks the rabbits? They call them Cadillacs, I think. Oh, caddies. caddies. Yeah, caddies. So he bought this because it's a diesel. He wants to get 50 miles to the gallon, you know, save money on gas. Well. The engine was toast in it, the head was gone, some pieces were missing, so he went on a quest to find a motor for it. Who does this? Who does what? Oh, is that what came out of it? Yeah, they pulled two pistons out of it and lost them. They pulled two pistons out and lost them, and then they did you... They pulled the head off and said that somebody stole it. Somebody stole the head, <laughs> what they claim. I don't know. Anything could happen. So he did find a motor for it, but he had to go to New Mexico and he couldn't just buy a motor. The whole deal was he had to get two motors and a car, which is sitting back there, right there. And so both the motors he got were trash, kind of, and he had to take two motors and make one. And it's just been this whole fiasco. So here's part of the mess right here. So he did a light rebuild on it. Uh, I guess you'd consider it a light rebuild and put it all back together. Used both motors to make the one and stuck and it in what, there. That's what happens when you run them hot. Oh, right there. Peeled the, peeled the pistons off the one motor. The other motor wasn't that way. Mm -hmm. The other motor wasn't that way. It, the other motor, look, I don't know why they quit driving it. It, there was, it, was, it was not too bad. Everything. Oh, and we checked the injectors on your injector test. Oh, yeah. I don't know if the injection pump works. We'll see. We'll see if the injection pump works. Yeah, that's in question. But I, I bought this. Huh? I got three. Three what? Injection pump. Oh, you got three three injection pumps. So well, maybe one of them will work. Yeah, we got options. But I bought this injection tester off of Amazon. I really wanted to use it, and this was the perfect scenario. It's like this bench testing thing that's a pop pressure tester for injectors, and we got to use it on this. And they, you know, all the injectors seem to work. You know, they popped it like 1,700 PSI or whatever. So... Well, we'll see if the injection pump's doing its thing, then you know it should run. This has been Dad's project for the past few weeks, maybe a month or so. Um, just getting this, finding the parts for this engine, getting it put together, getting it put in there. 
So he's, he's determined to get his 50 miles a gallon. I'm going to get my 50 miles to the gallon. That's what you call an inflation beater. It's an inflation beater. Yeah. Most of the stuff we go get, you don't need a big pickup truck to get it. You know, yeah. Something lightweight will haul most of what we go get. Yeah, like when we go to swap meets and stuff, we don't always need to take the 12 valve Cummins, you know, we don't always run hauling heavy stuff there, hauling heavy stuff home, so it's it's good to have one of these smaller trucks around. That's why they call it a caddy. It's a little push caddy, right? It's a little caddy. Caddies things around. That's what it'll do. Not too cool, but it'll be all right. Yeah, they're not the sleekest looking vehicle in the world, <laughs> not at all. No, not much. No. I think they were more going for functionality than making it the prettiest thing ever to grace the road. No, it ain't pretty. Yeah. But. <laughs> Over four dollars a gallon ain't pretty neither. Yeah, that ain't pretty neither. It's not pretty on your pocketbook. So yeah, that's what the uh, game plan is. For those of you who have stayed to the very end of the video, here is a sneak peek of the next project coming up. Here is another 60 El Camino. Uh, Dad purchased this guy right here. No motor, no tranny. It's pretty beat down. This one's a rough one, but we're finding a drivetrain for it now. I think we got a motor. Dad's getting a transmission for it tomorrow up in Phoenix. And we're gonna piece this thing back together, make it run, drive, possibly stop, maybe. But El Caminos are cool. It's a good year. 59 and 60s are really good years for these cars. Sought after cars, really cool look. I think Dad just told me he got the bezels for these lights. So, yeah. We'll get this thing running and driving, and that will be something that's going to be in the near future. I don't know if it's going to be the next video, but it will be in the near future. I think we've been working on it for five, maybe six months now. I bought it in November, um, but we uh, got the entire interior in, the door panels, the handles, the rubber carpet floor mat thing, the seat, which is beautiful, headliner, handles, every doors work, all that good business. Got the visor on, I like the visor, that's really cool. Fixed a bunch of piddly stuff, charging issue, adjusted the valves, you know. So it's, it's getting real dialed in, she's real dialed in. I got a few more piddly things to do on it, like the wood blocks underneath the bed, because those are rotted out, the bed's kind of wobbly. And then there's aprons, there's cover pans that go right there behind the or in front of the rear fender that I got to put on but it's just little tchotchke stuff but for all intent and purposes she's ready for the road she is totally road worthy as of now so like always I always appreciate you guys watching the videos liking them commenting asking questions always like responding in the comments subscribing it means a lot uh, to, that people follow the stuff dad and me do because we love doing it you know like this kind of stuff is just we really, really like it so very much appreciate it we'll see you guys in the next video